The Simpsons, The Simpsons, The Simpsons. The Simpsons was one of my favorite shows along with SpongeBob growing up. It's kind of ironic how two of my favorite childhood cartoons are also my two favorite licensed video games. How dare you not say that the Arkham games aren't the best licensed games of all time? Prepare to die. Anyway, I loved The Simpsons growing up. Every day, 6 p.m. on Channel 4, I was there. Hell, I even have the box set DVD collection from season 1 through 14. I'm proud of. The Simpsons was one of the reasons why I started my passion for drawing and art. And of course, when we have a license, we are going to get license based video games. And 80% of those Simpsons video games are a pile of rubbish. Like, seriously, Simpsons Wrestling and Bart vs. Aliens on the NES. But we do have diamonds in the rough like the Simpsons game, the Simpsons arcade game, and Road Rage. Even though Road Rage was a blatant ripoff of Sega's Crazy Taxi. But there was one game I personally think stood tall above the rest and although it may be seen as a clone to GTA San Andreas at the time, I always thought it was a parody of it and it works perfectly. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you The Simpsons Hit and Run. The narrative is a typical Simpsons style humour which you can clearly see as the writers of the show also wrote the script for Hit and Run as well. The opening scene starts off with a mysterious green ray of light with these robotic bees with cameras flying across the city of Springfield. We see one bee enter the Simpsons residence and gets crushed by Homer then goes back to sleep, giving you quite an original style menu compared to other modern video games. Props to Radical Kit Entertainment for that one. Then we have this brand new drink that's being marketed called Buzz Cola, which Home is craving for, turning out to be a mind controlling drug. We also have these mysterious black vans that have been appearing everywhere around Springfield, and it's up to the Simpsons family, mainly Bart, Homer, Marge, Lisa, and Apu, Nahasa Peter Petalon, to find out what's going on and to save Springfield, with each character given their own level and area of Springfield. Homer has the suburbs and farms, Bart has the downtown city type area, Lisa having the coast and squid port. But Marge and Apu are given their recycled areas but taking place during the evening. But what I love the most is that there is a whole level dedicated to the Treehouse of Horror slash Halloween theme. This is how you make a license based video game. Show love towards the fans and if you are a fan of The Simpsons, you will love the amount of references and famous landmarks scattered across the city Like of the Stonecutter's secret tunnel from the Stonecutter's episode, the bomb shelter at the back of the garden of the Flanders house from the Bart's Comet episode, the rocket car and solid gold house from the Day Violence Died episode, the easter eggs and landmarks are endless. Each level starts up with a humorous magazine article which I love because from this you can tell the developers of the game are huge fans of the show. It's many the little things that show you how much love is put into a game. Your tutorial starts off with you playing as Homer with Bart instructing the controls thinking you are a complete idiot and never played a single game right, in your life. One, Why do people uh, always Homer. think this? I never I mean, get it. Homer, use a directional button or left analog stick to move around. This is called walking. Press the X button to jump and hold down the circle button to run. Anytime you're in the air, hit jump again to get a little extra push. Got it? In Hit and Run, there's three types of styles in the game, collecting, racing and platforming. Your main currency are these golden Buzz Cola coins which you can exchange for items like other valuable cars or costumes. You can obtain these by destroying Buzz Cola vending machines, Buzz Cola crates, races or by running over stuff. I would recommend you to avoid running over everything because there is a police gauge and when that hits the limit, there's no escape from Wiggum and those two other cops of Springfield. These guys don't stop at all for you. If you get caught, you will get fined and it will be a pain in the last half of the game, especially when you're trying to obtain costumes for exclusive missions. For the completionists and collectors, there are gags that you have to complete and baseball cards to collect and by collecting these you will result in a secret episode of Itchy and Scratchy and I found this personally satisfying. Now one thing that I do have a problem with Hit and Run is the character models and lip syncing. Now for some reason during the late 90s to mid 2000s all games had to have 3D model characters based off 2D animated shows. And it just kind of seems weird seeing The Simpsons in a full 3D environment. Although it does remind me of that Treehouse of Horror episode where Homer enters a 3D dimension. And the lip syncing is god bloody awful. My god. Homie, somebody ate every dessert in the house. I need you to run to the store and pick up some of that ice cream with the miniature pies in it. Well, it must have been one of our kids. Probably Milhouse. Uh, what the hell is this? If you look past the terrible lip syncing, The Simpsons Hit and Run is overall a fun game and a very underrated game. If you're a fan of the show, you will laugh a lot, I guarantee it. 
all the cast return to reprise their roles, the writing is on point and you will be a bit frustrated in the later levels of the game due to the difficulty spike, but you will definitely feel satisfied completing it. And even if you don't want to do any missions, it's still a blast roaming around the city of Springfield. With that said, that was Simpsons and Run, the Nintendo GameCube. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. Please like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time. Thank you, come again. And don't have a cow, man.